so this account, one of the big lessons for us is that it, it's like a drum that just beats loudly the sound of God's holiness, that he's pure. And because he is pure, he is just. And because he is just, he will judge the wickedness in the world. And our reaction to God doing this, to bringing judgment, reveals where our sympathies lie. It reveals where our sympathies lie. Is it with God or is it with humankind? Years ago, I watched one of the worst movies ever made. It's called The Happening. Um, there's an apocalyptic threat to humanity. People are dying everywhere, dropping dead because... There are deadly toxins that have been released into the atmosphere, but by the trees, by the plants who are fighting back. The trees, the plants, they have had enough of humanity trashing them, trashing them, trashing them. And so nature fights back. Now, it's a silly storyline, but when you hear of a plot like that, you can go, oh yeah, fair enough. I get why the environment would be jack of us, the way we use and abuse and trash and take for granted. Yeah, good on it. What about God and the way that we have used and abused and trashed and sidelined? Almighty God. God brings judgment. We go, how dare he? But then actually we go, oh, look at all this wickedness in the world. Why won't God do something about it? And then he does something about it. He brings judgment. We go, how dare he? This account uh, kind of reveals where our sympathies lie. Is it with God or is it with humanity? This is the way that the New Testament interprets the flood. Jesus has quite an extended use of it. Chase it up later, Matthew chapter 24. Jesus uses the flood to warn of the very real judgment of hell to come. Jesus, gentle Jesus, meek and mild, loving Jesus speaks of an eternity in hell to come as the flood came. It is a warning from God. And yes, of course, people will scoff of the idea of an unseen judgment in an unseen future by an unseen God. <laughs> you idiots. So the question becomes, who will you trust? Will you trust the word of God about the past, about what that means for the present in light of what it says about the future? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7 reflects on Noah. New Testament says, By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. In faith, Noah trusted the word of an unseen God about an unseen moment to come, about an unseen judgment. Noah's faith was vindicated as will the faith of every person who trusts in this Word of God. There's the second big lesson that falls out for us. The holiness of God, the sinfulness of sin, the reality that God will set His world right, which is terrible news if we are the people. Chapter 6 verse 5 says that we are. Which is why thirdly, and most importantly, the big message is God's mercy. This is in the Bible to point us to the mercy, the grace of God. The greatest lesson is our need to find safety. Properly read, the account of Noah points us to Jesus, to his death, where the justice of God and the mercy of God meet together in the cross of Christ where God pours out fully and finally the judgment on wickedness. But in mercy, takes it upon himself in his son Jesus, satisfying the punishment forever for all. So that anyone, everyone who looks to him, who trusts in him as their substitute might find safety, might find an ark. So the biggest question this passage asks of you this morning is, are you safe in Christ? Are you safe from the coming justice that God will bring on his world? Have you asked God to forgive you all your wickedness as you look to a saviour Jesus, as you put your trust in him, his death and his resurrection? Friends, Jesus is the great ark provided by God, the only place of safety 
from judgment and more. Remember that the, the ark, the story is, is a story of recreation. It's in Jesus alone that we experience recreation. Where hard, sinful hearts are softened to now beat for our God to know him as Father. Sin remains for now. We bumble and stumble. We are not all that we should be, but we have new desires to please God, to live for God. If anyone is in Christ, he, she is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Of course, we now await, uh, we're kind of on the ark, on, on the waters, so to speak, as we await the new heavens and the new earth, the dry land where there is no more sin, where every dimension of us is healed and restored. Yet we know and we taste this recreation now and only in Jesus. 